Retiring at the age of 38, doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> Enough money in the bank, no more pressure, lots of vacation, do whatever you feel like. Sounds great, right? Well, not to me. I never wanted to give up my job, and if you ask me, I would have gone forever. But I was forced into retirement. Growing up in the 70s didn't offer a lot of distractions. We had one TV with only five channels. We had no PlayStation, no computer, no Facebook, no smartphone. And I guess some of you might remember. And I was powered by lots of energy. And I probably drove my parents crazy with it. So I joined every sport club our little village had to offer. And thinking back, I was pretty bad at all of them. But there was one exception, however, skiing. In skiing, it turned out I had a huge talent and a great feeling for the element of snow. And I considered our ski, little ski resort in Liechtenstein as my own personal playground. An idea was born. I wanted to become a professional ski racer. And that idea turned into my ultimate dream. I put lots of dedication, hard work, and training into it. And at the age of 25, I finally arrived at the top, as an equal among the best ski racers in the world, in a sport where 99.5% of all that try failed. And I was living my dream, life in the fast lane. For most people, way outside the comfort zone. But to me, it felt so good. But life wasn't about sunshine and victories and happy faces all the time. It was tough. And I had to suffer a lot. Throwing up from exhaustion and training, constantly cold feet, physical pain most of the time, injuries, broken bones, seeing some of my best friends getting hurt, some of them even died. Being a professional ski racer requires a huge ability to suffer. And trust me, I learned my lessons losing. I did 300 World Cup races. I won four of them. So basically, I lost 296 times. <laughs> but losing is part of our lives. How can we appreciate happiness if we never experienced or even embraced the feeling of losing, the disappointment, the sadness, and the shame that comes along with it? At the age of uh, 37, a younger generation started to beat me, and I had to tap into the last 5% of my safety margin, just to be able to be competitive on that level. And I'm not talking outside the comfort zone, I'm talking deeply in the danger zone of an extreme sport, where I had to risk my health on a daily basis, way more than I was willing to. And fear started to creep in. And fear, ah, it's always a bad companion. Emotions can be a very strong driving force but we have to learn how to take care of them. If we expose ourselves to a huge variety of intense emotions all the time, our brain might get overwhelmed. And this is what happened to me. In the morning before the World Championship downhill in 2009 in Val d'Isère, I couldn't handle the pressure anymore. In all the training runs leading up to that race, I was making a very strong impression. And I had the chance to become world champion in the most prestigious discipline of my sport, the downhill. Oh, it would have been a way to put a crown on top of my career. But all I wanted to do, I wanted to stay in bed and cry. I didn't have any energy left. My subconscious was completely overloaded, and I had a mental breakdown. Somehow I pulled my stuff together, dragged myself up to the start of that race, tricking myself into taking one step after another. After crossing the finish line, ending up fourth on that day, I knew my career is over. That panic attack was the sign that showed me I need to retire. So the next day, I drove to Zurich and bought myself a flight ticket to Miami. I told my coaches not to look for me, that I needed some time, some distance, just to get away. And only 36 hours after that race, I found myself in a beach chair in South Beach, Miami, looking up into the night sky, and in my hand, I held the biggest mojito you could ever imagine. <laughs> 
But right then and there, I made a decision. I'm going to announce my retirement, but I'll do one last season just to soak it all up. And after that last season, I had the chance and the privilege to prepare for my retirement. So I, I was still one of the top 10 racers, so they gave me a nice opportunity. So I dressed up nicely in a tuxedo, and I did my last run. I shook lots of hands and enjoyed the spotlight I was getting for one last time. And right after that last race, the whole pressure lifted, and I will call it the honeymoon phase. And for a whole summer season, I was just simply enjoying life. But as the new winter season started, I found myself in front of the TV, watching my fellow colleagues racing down, and I had tears in my eyes. And it dawned on me that I will never ever in my life experience this feeling again. This feeling of racing and all the emotions that it included. And for the first time, I asked myself seriously, Will I ever find something that will fulfill me as much as ski racing did? I need something that fulfills me, something that keeps me living. But what could that be? For the last two decades, I was always defined by numbers. I lifted this and this much weight in the gym. I did so and so many training runs. I had this and this position at a race. Every evening, I could tell by these numbers if I was successful or not. But after my retirement, there were no more numbers that defined me and my performance. So how was I now to measure my success? And what is success? And is it only numbers that fulfill me? So the one big question came up. Who am I? Why was I so fulfilled with ski racing? It took me weeks to find the answer, which I probably already knew from that one night when I was in Miami, lying in that beach chair, with a bigger grin on my face than the mojito in my hand. Call it crazy, but obviously I needed that distance just to realize that I'm one hell of a lucky guy. No matter how intense that panic attack was, I simply felt so alive. What I also realized that night was, on a typical racing day, from the moment I get up to the moment I go to bed, I experience a complete variety of it. And this is what remains. It's not the physical medal or trophy I take home with me. It's neither the money nor the spotlight. It's the emotions that it represents. We're all driven by emotions. Interactions, experiences, encounters, they're the biggest adventure out there. And this adventure happens to be a huge motivation. And this certainly applies to me. So instead of asking yourself what you will do in the future, the question is, how do you want to feel? And this is what I ask myself. How do I want to feel? Talking always came pretty easy to me since I love to communicate. And the idea of standing in front of a crowd, having one chance to deliver with all the adrenaline, the excitement, and the nervousness, and trust me, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> this all seemed like a huge emotional challenge to me. I even did some tests in this studio right here just to see if working in front of the camera could be something for me. And boy, <laughs> it felt so good. <laughs> and the best thing about it? It doesn't only satisfy my own core. It enables me to create closeness and to build bridges. With my function as a TV expert in alpine skiing, I get to convey my knowledge and understanding, transport emotions, and hopefully inspire lots of other people through my passion for this sport. Life sometimes puts us in a situation of change. Maybe a retirement, or maybe we lose our job, get sick or have an accident, or just simply because we wish to have a major change. But what can we learn from this? Subtract yourself from what you do, what position you are professionally in, and what you own, and go back to your core and focus on your desired feelings. How do you want to feel? Because 
Even if the race is over, you never retire from being who you are. Thank you very much.